Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Amateur Night at, at Aesthetic Conversion. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a fun night planned for you guys. We, we have... We do. We do. We have... Almost 500 people on this webinar. I guess everybody wants to learn about um, our, our subject tonight, which is biostimulants. So this is going to be fun, awesome. Fun. Yeah. But we have some housekeeping to we do, do ahead of time. We do. <laughs> um, what kind of housekeeping, Lori? Um, what have you been doing since the last AI? Uh, I was just going to ask you. I was just going to ask you. Well, I, um, what I do in the last you month, went to Bahamas. Went to the Bahamas. I, I went know. to Nassau for the first time ever. And um, we had a down home cooked meal from locals there, and we thought we were we thought we were dead. <laughs> but um, the most the warmest it was fifty fifty grillers in behind Nassau, and it was the warmest, kindest Jason, the guy who cooked the food, mm -hmm. and he smoked it in re in recycled water heaters. I know. So they made it was just amazing. Anyway, yeah, we had a great trip at the Bahamas. It yeah. was really fun. Yeah, it was really pretty. How about I you? Went, you went skiing. I went to the opposite direction. I went skiing. <laughs> I went to water. Yeah, went family to trip. We went skiing. So I'm good with that. I know. I'm good with the cold maybe once a year. That's it. The rest need to be in the summer. Yeah, because your, your Christian Louboutin ski boots get frozen. <laughs> Do not have Christian Louboutin ski boots. No, they're, Thank you they're Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Oh my I gosh. So, oh, oh, we have a game. We have a game. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, crap. Our staff, our staff likes to stump. It's called Stump crap. Us. They it like to really stump us. Stumping us. Okay, so there's a the game. What's the All game, right. you guys? Test your luck. Test your luck. Stimulant, stimulant trivia. trivia. All right. Okay, that's a three leaf clover. Is it not lucky? <laughs> Just asking. Right, we're, we're so screwed. Oh, here's. Okay. <laughs> Play the game test, your luck. Uh, okay, we're ready. <laughs> I'll read a question aloud, and you will give me your answer. All right. Question one. True or false, Sculptra was first approved by the FDA in 2004 to treat lipoatrophy in people living with HIV. Like true. true. That's totally true. You are correct. Yeah. Woo! That's when I first got in the industry. Right. Yep. I wasn't allowed to inject it, but... All right. <laughs> Question two. Which biostimulant is used as a suture material in surgical operations? PLLA. PLLA. That is correct. Yes! Yeah. Okay, two for two. Question three. True or false, biostimulating dermal fillers are reversible? Nope. No. False. That is correct. Yeah. Woo! Three for three. Okay, we're good. We're batting a thousand so far. Question four. True or false? The first injectable filling agent was paraffin. Paraffin? Paraffin. It... True? <laughs> no. False? I don't know. Uh -oh. <laughs> paraffin? That's and... wax. True. Oh, yeah. Paraffin. Winner. I'm the... Paraffin. That's like wax. That's wax, right? Oh my oh, no. gosh. On to question well, five. People inject a lot of okay. things. What are the side effects of that one? Which type of biostimulant was the first product to heave as a filler to produce immediate volume while stimulating collagen in the long term? Oh, Kaha. Radius. Kaha. Yeah. Kaha. Yeah. Radius. Radius. Biostimulant. That is yeah. correct. Filler. Yeah. I'm like, what's the immediate volume? Filler. Duh. <laughs> Calcium. Okay. Question six. Fact or fiction? Kaha occurs naturally in human bone and teeth. True. True. Fact. Calcium. Yes. Yeah. You are correct. Fact. True. All right. Oh, we're almost done. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm sorry, I made you like, Your okay. <laughs> last question. Which type of biostimulant is the oldest? Oldest. PLLA? It's 2004. That was, before, that was the only one I know. PLLA. Because that's the only PLLA. PLLA. It's the only one I know of. Went to, win, went to that train, the trainers. Right. They like had the whole timeline. Right. PLLA. PLLA. Oh, yay! Yay! Yeah! Thank you for playing. Okay. <laughs> now it's time. Thank you. Thank you, voice guy. Thank you. <laughs> oh okay. My goodness. Well, I hope you learned something. We learned something. Uh, I, learned I learned that something paraffin, paraffin was, was injected. What the heck? Okay. What the heck? Sounds good. All right. All right. On to biostimulants. Here we go. Topic of tonight. I love it. 
All right, so biostimulants are a few different things. We just mentioned PLLA, which is poly -L lactic acid. And again, that was something that was developed in, that was suture material. It's just degradable suture material. Yep. CAHA, which is a calcium hydroxyl appetite. Um, and that also makes hyperglute calcium hydroxyl appetite out of that. Yep. So um, that, that's radius. Radius mm -hmm. on our marketplace. And then we have PMMA. So this is known as Bellafil, used to be Artifil. Mm -hmm. Polymethyl methacrylate. So it's a combination of the PMMA with, um, I believe it's a collagen, right? It's a collagen, that's why yeah. you have to test. Bovine collagen. You, it's a bovine collagen, so yeah. you have to test. Um, and then there's the adipose fat matrix, our and that's, new yeah, thing. That's it's known as Renuva, and that's actually a biologic. So all of these things grow your own tissue. So mm -hmm. we kind of lumped everything together. Some are yep. biostimulants, biologics, so we kind of lumped those together. So those are everything. And you know, I, I look at this, and, and we've been in this industry <clears throat> for 15, 17, 18 years. And, um, and I really see the direction of aesthetics kind of going in this direction. I yeah. didn't expect it years ago, but I'm seeing people want m something more natural, less of the fillers they have to keep redoing and more of the natural I, th I think it, it, it all works together. I mean, at the end of the day, biostimulants are going to be great for volumizing up to a certain point. Mm -hmm. You're still going to need your HAs down below to give you the true volume impact that you would need to replace the fat pads, the deeper fat pads, the bone structure. But I think now that people have been filled and filled and filled, they're now starting to look at stuff that maybe gives you, as you said, more of a natural aspect mm -hmm. of it. And the fact that we're seeing these biostimulants kind of really engage that skin quality. I think that's yeah. where, that's the thing that I think people are missing. And nowadays when I talk to practitioners about it, even my patients about it, I always try and tell them that we're aging on all different levels, bone, deep fat pad, muscle, superficial fat pad, and your skin. And when you age in all different levels, one thing out there is not going to fix all different, all five levels. And so now I think with the, with where we are in technology and how we've grown so much over the last 18 years that I've been in the industry, it really has proven that we now can uh, start to address almost every single level. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. injectors like us who have been doing this for a while are now looking for that next type of thing to really kind of more cherry on top of cherry on top. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's where these biostimulators are really, really coming into play. I think as beginners, still start with your basic HA, do your filler, but as you start to work in the artistry, this is where you kind of you say you can use this stuff to fine tune and really exemplify everything that you've done in the past on that patient. I also, I do too. I do too. There's, um, everything's got its place. <clears throat> and I think that these biostimulants and biologics absolutely have their place. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, sometimes it's a different technique to inject them. And that's why we want to have the hands-on course. So if you want to come, come, but, um, it's a different technique. It is. And I think you need to be a little bit more of an experienced injector a little bit. I wouldn't say a brand, brand new injector might want to try it, but I would <laughs> say, um, yeah, it's something that is great to add to the repertoire. Right. All right. So. PLLA, biocompatible bio mm -hmm. synthetic material that that stimulates the collagen, um, breaks down on its own over a couple, I think they, they say like nine, eight, seven, six to eight, nine months, it mm -hmm. does kind of start to break down. Um, they have newly reapproved yes. kind of for um, overall collagen stimulation to soften out the nasolabial folds and the cheek areas. You can now we can talk on label as far as injecting into the deep dermis subcutaneous level. Super periosteal. And now super periosteal yeah. has been added to that. Um, and I know a lot of people use this. I mean, ultimately it's, it's a great product. I think used in the past, I think a lot of the misconceptions of it come from the past and when they were doing the HIV and all of those uh, trials where they're just starting to learn about how this can revolumize the face. Um, that's where they got a lot of those nodularity, mm -hmm. those nodule mm -hmm. formations that people are still stuck in the heads on it. I mean, we've been injecting it now for maybe a decade now, probably. Well, we, I think probably yeah. 2008 we started. I don't remember. Probably Something. 2008 we started. 
something like Doing that. <laughs> so we've been yeah. injecting for a while yeah. now, um, and we've had, I honestly, for me, probably haven't seen nodularities mm -hmm. very often. Maybe two or three cases out of all the sculpture in injections that we've done, and now we are injecting the whole body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it's been a great, great biostimulator. Yeah, it's great. The one thing you want to avoid in any of these biostimulators or biologics is really get them, getting them into the layer of the muscle. Yeah. These belong in the layer of tissue that you're trying to stimulate. If you're trying to stimulate collagen, you inject this where the collagen would normally be. That would be mm -hmm. subdermal, a little bit super periosteal, not as much, but mostly subdermal. If you're going to try to build fat, you inject this where the fat would be. So you need to inject it where it used to be or it's usually not going to be stimulated as well because we count on that body right. to stimulate this product and right. everybody stimulates at different rates right. too so what is your opinion on temples in this area <laughs> i have not been know, thrilled with temples because i know this yeah. is where everyone goes oh i'm going to inject temples yeah. with my plla yeah. instead of doing an ha because of that but i'm along this line yeah. with you i think you have to go back and especially in this field we have to go back and take common sense back into the storyline i know early on we used to tell patients don't lay down after getting botox. a botox yeah. injection <laughs> and i always occurred to me like why is that why do we tell people that because when you're standing straight up <laughs> gravity potentially potentiates it down when you lay down it kind of goes in the opposite direction yeah. and so i started way long ago to tell my patients oh, don't worry about that but this is where the misconception to mm -hmm. me of sculpture is i mean ultimately what are we trying to do with these biostimulators is where you have to go the, the thought is that you need to use this to stimulate your fibroblastic activity and if you're stimulating fibroblastic activity where are your fibroblasts at the end of the day, when you really look at it, periosteal, I had to do my own research, and I actually did find that on that periosteal layer, there is some collagen getting stimulated in there. So there is some fibroblastic activity that can maybe thicken it up just a tiny little bit on that periosteal level. However, majority of where you're going to find your fibroblastic activity is in your dermis, your deep dermis is maybe getting it slightly into your sub-Q area superficially, but that's where you're targeting. So if you're targeting into that fat layer, I don't think you're really going to stimulate as much. I you're know. putting a fertilizer into an area that really nothing to no per se fertilize in <laughs> yeah. that area. So when you guys do these things, make sure you take it with a consideration of what you really are doing. What is this product for? Going back to why we created our classes is helping you guys explain the why. If you understand this is going to stimulate your collagen by stimulating the fibroblasts, well, if we're injecting it deep into this area, are you really going to get the volumization that you would expect out of like an HA filler? I personally have never saw it, and I actually stopped a while back because yeah. I never, I never really got that. No, I've seen it give me more volume with younger patients. So if they're in their <clears throat> 30s, I'm see, I've seen a little bit more volume. Um, mm -hmm. The older they get, I see just more of a skin integrity change mm -hmm. and a thickening of the dermis, but not necessarily volume. Yeah. So I think it's um, age dependent also. And, and how, maybe it how is age fat. dependent. I think I think maybe maybe they that your younger patients have more projection already, so you see that yeah. change mm -hmm. better more quickly and easily versus an older patient. You're injecting them if they don't have the projection. It's you know if you don't have True. fat in your boobs. It's still they're staggy. Just, they're being down here. <laughs> you can they're thicken up here. the skin and make it look better. <laughs> the skin quality can look better, but it, without the projection, you still don't got it. <laughs> oh God, I still love you. I still love your marionette lines analogy. Oh. I'm going. <laughs> That's I'm the going best to... analogy ever. <laughs> That's for another day. <laughs> for another day. <laughs> okay. All right. Next um, biostimulant. So Kaha, calcium hydroxylapatite, this is also known as radius, and um, is, is, it's in our bones. Um, it is a readily absorbable form of calcium. So it is something that is absorbed, broke down in our, in our body within a few months and absorbed. But this does help to create a collagen stimulation mm -hmm. uh, prior to it being broken down. But what's really <clears throat> kind of cool about this is you've got the Kaha, you've got the calcium hydroxylapatite in there, and it creates a little bit of volume while you you're building collagen. So this is a really fun one. It's not just putting water with powder. You're injecting something almost like a 
thin filler mm -hmm. that's going to give you a little bit of volume while you're growing volume, which is kind of nice, which yes. is nice. This is not dissolvable. I don't want anybody out there to think it is dissolvable. It is not. There's a lot of confusion out there mm -hmm. um, that there's a sodium thiosulfate that will dissolve this, but it will mm -hmm. not work intravascularly. So this is not dissolvable. Yeah, it, that sodium thiosulfate only breaks it apart. It does not actually dissolve it. But you know, the, the great thing about Kaha is that it's been around actually for a while. I yeah. used to, well not used to, I still inject with it, but I used to use it a lot on my patients, especially in noses, um, <laughs> back when we were first starting. <laughs> um, but I mean, Kaha has always been one of those interesting things. And I think when we first got into it, and I used to actually train for them when, mm -hmm. it was, when they were owned by Bioform, yeah. Um, back in like 2005, 2006, when it first came out, it was called Radia Radiance. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. It was Radiance, and then it got changed to Radius. And then I've watched the evolution where we added a little bit of lidocaine to it. Um, and now we have the differences in the two products. Um, but you really, really didn't, as much as back then, they did tell us that it was a biostimulator. They did. We really didn't take it to effect of really what it was really doing. They we never just, explained the mechanism of yeah, action. We they just said it builds collagen. They used it as a filler, and they yeah. said it builds collagen. They're like, okay, well, that's where, remember the HAs? They were saying, oh, that stimulates a little bit of collagen. Yeah. And we were like, oh, no, it's just the needle poking through the skin <laughs> that was stimulating collagen. Well, we know collagen. that anytime you stretch tissue, the fiber are going to be stretched, and you'll build collagen. Exactly. So we know that now, yes. but we did, there was so much more research now than there was years it's ago. So much more research. And honestly, looking back on it, because I did inject a lot of noses because this is a really strong high G prime projections on the aspect of it. I go back and look at it. Those patients that ended up doing more consistent injections on their nose with Kaha at that point in time, we always ended up after about two, three years finding that this area, the bridge ended up widening and thickening out. And we're like, well, why is that? Because you know, we always thought the product was disappearing in a sense, and we now know products stay a lot longer than FDA um, approvals. But I think it has to do with not only the building up of the product in there, but there's probably some collagen that got stimulated. And so instead of it staying narrowed that we got these beautiful results when we first started injecting it, over time, it kind of started actually building more firmness and collagen into the area, and you can actually feel it. It was weird and interesting. And now, Fast forward, we have gotten into this whole biostimulatory aspect of it. Now I go back and I'm like, oh, mm. you know what? That was probably a lot of more collagen maybe stimulated into the area. Who knows um, in that aspect of it? But you could definitely see this um, now that we have more studies with regards to hyperdilute radius um, and seeing that it does stimulate your collagen type 1s, a little bit of collagen type 3. But the other thing was the elastin that gets produced right. by it, which is one beautiful thing that I personally do love about this calcium hydroxyapatite. I have yet to know at this point in time whether or not Sculpture has the elastin production. I, we've asked, but I haven't gotten that answer yet. So I they had I never came that. back. I did ask medical science, and they didn't come back with anything that they found in any literature okay. at this point okay. in time to support that. Kaha does have this the literature to support elastin production, which we know by the age of was 18. it eighteen you stop producing <laughs> elastin, just so great. no more stretchability in your skin at oh, eighteen. So <laughs> this is one I definitely find that I actually like, and I've started using a lot more of this in my practice. Um, since having gone down to Brazil um, and seeing what they're, they're able to do with it. Yeah. So one of my kind of favorite biostimulants as well. Works good. I'm going to let you talk about PMMA. <laughs> Lori does not like PMMA, even though we both have that and it injected in ourselves. I know. You put some, like years ago, I have we some right here. We both put some in there. Nope, no nodules yet. <laughs> um, PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate. Um, both of us a little bit more hesitant, Lori more so, but um, both of us not a big fan of PMMA. And it's just for us because... If you understand what PMMA is, polymethyl methacrylate, it really is powdered plastic. So I like your thing. It's like it's in the back of stripper heels. Right? Plastic, Those clear plastic clear stripper plastic heels. Stripper That's heels. what it is. That's kind of what it is. And the problem is, is that, yes, they are calling it more of a semi-permanent type mm -hmm. of a thing. Well, the PMMA is a certain percentage of it. Um, those little beads. And so it's great because it does 
somehow stimulate more collagen and get that collagen probably a foreign stimulated. body reaction probably a foreign body reaction um, the collagen that's injected which is a bovine collagen which requires some testing you have to realize that that collagen literally disappears within about four to six weeks so what's left over is the pmma um, and is there to stimulate it now i haven't had seen that many issues but you know we're always about what is safe or safest in a, in a sense. And so when you have something that you know is going to stay there permanently, even though like a radius, a calcium hydroxyl appetite, we know in research that in two to three years, even though you can't dissolve it away, in two to three years on x-ray CT scans, we know that the PMMA or the calcium hydroxyl appetite does disappear mm -hmm. and it breaks down in the body. PMMA, on the other hand, does not break down. And it kind of just stays there. It's kind of, you can say, like silicone. It just yeah. stays there and can potentiate some kind of reaction is what it is. And so um, I think prob the probability of having issues probably low. But at the end of the day, do you want to take that risk? That's for you to decide yeah. for your practice on the aspect of it is just understanding the the benefits versus the risk. And I know you have a couple of patients. I that do. Have I have a issues. couple of patients who had it put in by other practitioners and um, <clears throat> they get nodules that come and go um, just not, they're not even sick. They just kind of these nodules just start get growing and get inflamed and then they'll kind of go away and then they'll come up and they get these big marbles. Um, and I won't inject around them. I don't want to irritate that area. I don't want to touch it because I don't know if there's a biofilm around that or what it is. But when you put a permanent item in the skin, like you were mentioning, your body might have this foreign body reaction to it. And we don't know what that's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so we just want to be really careful. The only way you can take it out is to cut it out. And if you have a vascular occlusion, there's nothing you can do. That's true. So, um, that yeah, it's one of those non-dissolvable type fillers. So mm -hmm. just as, as far as, as long as you know what it is and what it can do and what it can't do and what the pros and what the cons are, then it's going to be up to you as a provider to choose to use it or not. Right. All right. Next one. It's our next one. Adipose matrix. Lori likes this. I do. I do. Started using this recently. I do. Yeah. Adipose fat matrix is put out by a company called MTF Biologics, and it is a biological material that is um, a fat matrix. So if you think of fat honeycomb. cells as being honeycomb, and fat cells as being the honey in the honeycomb. Um, all of the cells are taken away except for the matrix, which is, say, just the honeycomb. And it's made into like a thick material that's kind of like a, almost like radius. Mm, it's a thicker, okay. it's like a creamy, very creamy material. Um, and I put some lidocaine with saline in it and, and kind of make it into like a, like a whipped cream type consistency and inject it. We're only injecting the fat matrix. It yep. signals the body to grow fat on it. So it's really, really cool. So you'll get about 60 to 80 percent of fat regrowth on that matrix. Say if you inject um, two cc's, you're going to about you're going to get about 60 to 80 percent of that volume that regrows within about three months and maxed out about six months. So um, it's one of those really neat things that I've got done lately. I really, really like it because I'm replacing like with like. If I have a patient who's lost fat in their face, mm -hmm. I can put 20 layers of a biostimulant. Or I can put less of this and get more of the fat growth. And um, with fat cells come what? Stem cells. So we're going to have dermal thickening and beautiful skin with this too. So um, I've really, really enjoyed it. I really yeah. like this. Yeah. It's, a, it's newer on the marketplace. Mm -hmm. I think right now they're smaller companies. So they're restricting, they are restricting yeah. who's injecting it at this point in time. But I think as we do more research, we play with it more, hopefully. We show the safety with regards to it and and the results i think more the the hopefully the company will be more open to other practitioners um who are newer to be injecting this yeah right now they're developing criteria for yeah. um uh, injector criteria so it's important when you have something that's permanent like this because fast cells last 10 years mm -hmm. that you make sure that somebody's maybe already done Sculptra and Kaha you know for a while yeah. and are adept at using cannulas and know the plane of tissue before you kind of step up to something like no, this. No, for sure. So yeah. I, I agree with that. So currently the company is putting together some criteria for injector um, qualifications which is really good. So yeah. you'll, see mean, it, you'll see it out there. It's great because you can take it off the shelf and literally mix it. I know we were playing, I played with a little bit of fat using 
what was that machine the little thing called all yes, me yes you could literally do a little tiny bit of lipoing grab like a, a needle syringe and suck it out you take that fat out and then you put it through this m micro mesh system that micronizes and nanonizes the fat um, and then you literally could just re-inject it back into the face and that seemed to work very nicely as well. It takes a lot yeah. more effort because you literally have to numb up a whole area before you can go back in and you're taking about 10 to 20 cc's of fat out, you're letting it drain, you know, there's a lot more intensive process to that. This is a nice, easy one. You literally grab it yeah. off the shelf, rehydrate it, it in a sense, yeah. and you're It's all hydrated it. now. It's, it's all, all hydrated. hydrated. Oh, so all you have wow. to do is mix a lot of cane and some saline oh, with it. And nice. You, and you're done. Beautiful. Really easy. Yeah. Cool. All right. Oh. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Here we go. Um, oh, gosh. I did cut this <coughs> slide deck down short, didn't I? <laughs> she did. It was so long. Because like, we talk so much. Um, so hopefully that kind of gave you a, a good kind of a, a good little overview. Uh, overview of the biostimulants and the biologics. So if you guys have questions, type them in. Our staff's going to kind of pass them to us. Anything you wanted to mention about um, the biostimulants versus biologics? Um, talking about patients, who to put some of these in who maybe to choose to be more careful about putting them in um be, right, say with PLLA PLLA you may remember it's a little bit of a mild anti um, it's an inflammatory response so you want to probably be a little bit more careful I think on your patients who have a little bit more of an autoimmune disease process going on um, stable ones probably can get away with I think the ones that are in flare-ups you may want to back off with um, Things like uh, Kaha actually, Radius actually, it's not related to an inflammatory response from what they've done on research. So you're going to get more of a, the stretching, the, the scaffolding, this fibroblastic response with regards to that. So that may be a little bit more leaning towards the safer on the aspect of it. And so um, I, with regards to a PMMA, you know, both of you and I don't really use it. So I think that that's not something that I necessarily think about. Mm -hmm. Renuva is probably going to be, as I start to play with it, probably going to be for patients who really are much more fat deficient, mm -hmm. that you really do feel as though you need that fat to, to replace and it may take too many syringes and, of volume and to you're replace poking that. At your, your, we're pointing at the face. There's other places that like to have fat too, <laughs> I'm like neck, chest, yeah. butt, oh, yeah. arms. I'm like, there's mm -hmm. so many different places where we lose fat volume. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just the face. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, I mean it's yeah. very true. I mean, yeah. I honestly, I and, and so when the you're doing a BBL, what would you like to grow? We want to grow fat. Fat. Yeah. Yeah. It may be something for sure. Yeah. To, to do a consideration. Currently, I'm using more HDR, mm -hmm. hyperdilute radius, because I think I see at least some change immediately versus Sculpture, as much as I loved it. Kind of like waiting for the grass to grow a little bit longer, even though it does do a beautiful, beautiful job. I think that you just have to choose what your patient's expectations are with regards to that. Um, at one <clears throat> thing I wanted to mention, you guys, when you're using biostimulants, I want you to, number one, be very patient. This is like putting fertilizer on your grass. Mm -hmm. This is a slow growth. So the most important thing with this is educating your patients. You make sure those patients know that they're gonna see a little swelling or a little f product there you know, for the first few days, but it's gonna go away oh, and yeah. they're gonna look just like they did in a few days after you treat them than they did when they came in. Mm -hmm. So make sure that they understand that they're gonna look better in a year than they do now. It's gonna be a very slow growth. And when you, when patients understand that, they're all on board. They're yeah. all on board because they, they're they like, hey. Unless they want fast Nobody's results. gonna see what I'm doing. Unless people want fast <laughs> results. A lot of my men love slow. Yes. They like the slow stuff. So, um, but sure. no, it's it's nice. But just let your patients know that it's it's and, like fertilizer. It's like you can grass combine, seed. And you can combine these with HAs. It's not that you have to choose one or yeah. the other. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, a lot of times I get patients who I think really will benefit from these by stimulates um, during the holidays and they're like, nope, nope, I'm seeing family members. I need to look good now. I'm like, all right, let's yeah. do some, let's do some HA fillers on you, get you to where you're going to look good for the holidays. And then in the term of the year, we need to start doing these biosemias because it's not 
one treatment with biostimulants, unless you're in your 20s, which I do get, my Asians are all about doing biostimulants earlier on. Um, but by the time most people start to think that they're gonna want biostimulants, it's probably your later 30s, 40s, 50s. And so those patients are going to need a series of treatments. Yeah. It's not one and done. It's a series. It's a series of treatments. You throw fertilizer, wait a while, that fertilizer starting to do its job and you have to throw more <laughs> to keep growing more. Keep fertilizing. Um, you know, and if yeah. they're really volume depleted in a sense of their skin quality, they're going to need a series of yeah. treatments. They're going to need some. It's not just one treatment. So when you get into this, make sure that you understand that you have to have a good talk with them. This is not something you just like, yep, you're gonna see this immediate change. Yeah, they'll see these immediate changes and be like, wow. And then they're gonna go home, the water's gonna go away, and they're gonna be like, mm, did not like that. Why did I spend so much money on that? So you really, really, I honestly, I try and get my patients now to buy a package of them and not let them buy individual treatments because when you sell it as a package, they understand it, it's a package, not just one right. and done. They sell in packages. Sense. Okay, we have some good questions. <clears throat> what do you think about Elance? I said not in America. Elance is not in America. Um, I think Elance is the PCL. Po is it polycaprolactone okay I don't, know. Um, I don't know. as well that one does not that would last out. a lot longer that's going to last a lot longer i know when we were talking about it for threads um pcl has a potential of lasting three four or five years before mm -hmm. kind of maybe getting broken down i have to do a lot more research on poly polycarbonolactone but ultimately i think it can do a nice job of some collagen stimulation but i'd have to look at it more in the sense is if you dilute it out, whether it could be something similar to an HDR um, hyperdilute radius um, in that sense. But as a polycarbonolactone, unfortunately here in the US, we don't have access to it because it's not an FDA approved material at this point in time. Yeah. But good question. Next I'll, question let's is, look into it. yeah, can you get a vascular <clears throat> occlusion with Sculptor or any of the other biostimulant? Hmm. Um, Sculptor is kind of like a powder in water. So yeah. I think they, I have not seen any articles, but I've heard that there was one maybe issue that they didn't know quite what was going on. I don't know. I have never heard of it personally, or I've personally read about it with the sculpture that there's been a vascular occlusion. Um, sculpture in and of, uh, in and of itself, the it's microns, I um, mean, it's so in the tiny. 30 to 40 micron range for yeah. us, uh, for a sculpture particle and the way we're mixing and um, and drawing it up is, is definitely a lot different and nowadays. The, the Kaha so, is a much larger <clears throat> particle. Kaha is a little, it's a no, it's actually not that much larger. Oh, is it, well, you know, you're yeah, right. It's, it's a small particle, 40, but it's thicker. It's a thicker material. It's a thicker gel. Yeah. So there's a gel, car, the carboxymethylcellulose. Mm -hmm. And this is where we're, when we're talking yeah. to the company is like, if you could figure out a way to break down the carboxymethylcellulose, you could have an actual product that could be reversible because the Kaha is a very small micron size. It's in the 40 it's micron it range. Small. And so yeah. the actual calcium hydroxyl appetite is small enough that it should be able to pass through most of the capillaries and stuff like that. So ultimately, what is it that's really blocking it is the probably the carboxymethylcellulose. Yeah. And so that's more on that. Um, Good question. But I think um, like the hyperdilute Red ES, it's a little bit thicker. It's almost like whipped cream. Yes. So I think that's a little bit... I mean, most if of you're us gonna, are injecting it with a cannula, and cannula anyways. Yeah. Um, so I think most people are, are being a lot more careful with it. And if you are okay. using the Hyper Daily Race, we're using probably a 20, 22, 22 gauge cannula um, to inject it. Um, let's see, as far as Bellafil, yeah, we've definitely seen some vascular occlusions or heard some vascular occlusions yeah. on, from Bellafil. Blindness. It's just, you, yeah. can't, you, can't you can't get rid of it as well. So you have to really, really be a lot more careful with regards to that. Yeah. Um, with regards to Renuva, you probably are injecting with a cannula as well. Mm -hmm. um, but same, as, it would be, it's, a, it's like a whipped cream, same yeah. as hypergelute radius, <clears throat> so I would think the uh, risk would be about the same. Yeah, yeah. Be, there, I think there could definitely be a potential. It yeah. just, um, nowadays when we have cannulas, I think that you have the option of being much more um, safer, not that it's completely safe, but safer, mm -hmm. as long as you know how to use your cannula properly. Yeah, yep. be gentle. Be <laughs> Gentle with the cannula. So the sculpture stimulate bone. I think we kind of brushed on that. Um, it does not stimulate no. bone, 
but there is a periosteal layer on the bone that really can have some mild fibroblastic activity and you do see some thickening with regards to that. Yeah. So um, it's not like it's going to rebuild your bone, but there is some th mild thickening on that well, layer. It's like a collagen layer on top of the yes, bone. Yes, <laughs> it is. No, it is. It really yeah. is a collagen, collagen layer Collagenous on the bone. Layer. That's why the fibroblasts, um, there are fibroblasts that live in that layer that can actually stimulate um, a little it, bit more of that periosteal thickness. Yeah, and that's why if you put it down on the bone, the, in the piriform, mid face, if you kind of, or zygoma, if you put it down on the bone, then you might get a little bit of that, ex, that deep stimulation yeah. of, of that collagen tissue. So it's not that it all has to go subdermal. Some of it can go down towards the bone and it gives yeah. you nice, um, Dr. Shino Bay, yep. Aguilera does a beautiful, beautiful job with Sculptra and he doesn't dilute his as much as most of us do. He and he does has, a lot of bone. He has a, does a lot of deep bone injections and he, um, he has beautiful results. Mm -hmm. So I always say everybody's got different ways of doing things and you find your own way and you find what works for you and what's safe and stick with it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep looking at other people's though we'll keep watching everybody else um, so let's see should there be a certain amount of experience before training on these biostimulants i think so i think i i think so i think um you kind of need to know tissue planes. You need to know planes of tissue. We just want to stay out of the muscles. And if you think about it, in the muscle, what lives there? All the arteries. Mm -hmm. So we want to stay away from those muscles. So we just need to know the planes of tissue that we're in and kind of learn to feel that. Um, if you're using a needle, if you're using a cannula, that's the biggest thing. Um, if you get into a muscle, you can get it balls. You can make little nodules. Planes if they get are into important the because the goal of this is biostimulation. And if you think about it, you need to place it in areas where you're going to get stimulation. Yeah. Just randomly sticking it into a face is not going to be doing that. It's kind of like my little light bulb with temples. It's like, well, we stuck it down there. Didn't really do very <laughs> much of happening. anything. Nothing's really happening for my patients. And we keep sticking bottles and bottles and bottles. You know, you have to go back to reason, logic, common sense which I think a lot of people lack sometimes. They just follow like lemmings and mm -hmm. really don't question it. You know, out there question things. Just because somebody's doing it this way does not mean it's the right way or there may be better ways and better explanations of what's going on. So as far as the experience level, I, I agree that you probably need to know where your, your planes are so you can make sure that you're placing this into the right plane. Yeah. So I think once you start getting a little adept with your cannulas, you probably are figuring out what planes you are doing. It doesn't mean that you have to have three years, four years of experience. You, if you are great and you pick it up, and we see this all the time, there are people who probably six months, nine months into it, they really, really are practicing and really getting in there with their experience. They probably can start training on it very, very quickly. I think it's really just understanding where you're placing the product. And provider dependent too, yeah. I think. I think that expertise, that eye-hand coordination, everybody everybody improves at their own rate. You know, if you're yeah. working full-time, it's different than if you're doing it once a month. So I think that <clears> it's, it's provider dependent as far as your, sure. your rate of how quickly you learn and adapt, sure. adapt them. Next question is, can stimulate, can um, it stimulate, which I think it's Renuva, fat unequally, making one side of the face more prominent in areas. I've never seen it with Renuva. I, it would be awfully hard to do that because we kind of inject the same volume in each side. I have seen that with a fat transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my patients had, it took, totally took beautifully on one side, nothing took on really? the other. Yes. Oh my God. So for a few years, oh, I was only horrible. putting fillers and things in one side until she went and got a fat transfer again. <sighs> I'm like, you just need to go and try it again. So something was done probably with the, it, the fat will, you can damage fat in the process. And if you damage it, it won't survive. It's got to get its own neovascularization. Mm -hmm. So probably something in the technique is my guess mm -hmm. that so between the two sides, it, it one side didn't take. So I she haven't seen her now? lately. Yeah, yeah, she's great. <laughs> thank goodness. So she had a fat transfer to the other side, but for a few years I had to just yeah. do fillers on one yeah, side. The hardest thing I think with, with fat transfers is that you are you are moving fat from an area of high vascularity to an area of no vascularity and it has the format um you don't know what is going to take out of that and i think a lot of plastic surgeons end up overfilling just a little bit knowing that there's a certain amount of it that decreases and yeah and dissolves sometimes away. only 60 yeah. percent takes exactly and then if they put too much in they can get fat necrosis in the center so it, it might not take so there's I'm glad I'm not a surgeon. <laughs> but stay doing with what I'm a doing. bio, with a, a stimulant, which is the matrix of the fat, the mm -hmm. honeycomb, um, I think you're going to in 
uh, per se probably stimulate it more equally because the the too. actual matrix is being placed. You're not placing more fat on one side that still can potentially die. This is the matrix and it's actually recruiting fat yes. into the area. Yeah, it's growing. And the other thing is uh, we have our patients massage all the biologics and the biostimulants. Yep. We have our patients massage. Do you do two, two, two? Yep. Or five, five, five. Oh, two, 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 two. Yeah, I do two, two, two. Okay, so two, two, two. Um, we have our patients um, rub, massage. I give my patients a handheld m massager, and they just, and I want <laughs> two time, two minutes. Couple, I say couple, 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 couple minutes, couple times a day for a couple weeks. I do it with all of all of these biostimulants and biologics, yep. and have them massage it. I want this stuff spread out. Yep. We want it really spread out really yep. well, um, and the little massager works terrific. So they're not pu pulling on their skin. This right. works really well. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. All Thanks for your righty. questions, you guys. I know. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for the questions. Somebody asked about nasal labial folds and sculpture. I don't like to put it there very much because it's so close to the muscle. I might put a tiny, tiny, tiny little piriform. superficial piriform will piriform. do sculpture, but you just don't want to get it near a muscle because it will have a tendency to kind of create yeah. a little ball. Good questions. All Thanks. Thanks. Righty. Well, Thank you very much for joining us today. Hopefully, we stimulated you on <laughs> I, our biostimulant. That was, that was good. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, we stimulated you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, Can we cut that out? No, this is fun. live. We can't cut that out. <laughs> oh, hopefully, we, hopefully, you enjoyed this, you guys. <laughs> You're horrible, Lori. <laughs> you said it. Oh, you guys, this is funny. Okay, we have fun. I'm sorry we digress so easily. You should see us here all day long. I know. Um, but if you have any questions, email learn at theaestheticimmersion.com, DM us on our Instagram page, yep. follow our Instagram page, sign up for our courses. They are bar none, I think, the best courses out there. So we hope to see you here live one day for Hands On. I Thank know. you for joining us. Thank you see so you much, next you guys. Week. See you next, see you next oh, month. Oh, next, next month. Next month. <laughs> next month. Bye, five. Bye, guys. <laughs>